Hello, I'm Odin, and today I'm going to make another requested Marvel prop. It's Gamora's sword, as seen in Guardians of the Galaxy. For my pattern, I found a nice 3D model of Gamora's sword online. I'll put a link for the model below. To get the size, I looked up how tall Zoe Saldona is, and then I could scale the printout to match. <laughs> like, which way's up? <laughs> oh, I guess I can tell which way's up. Man, this thing is way smaller than I thought it was going to be. There's hardly anything here. These are straight up smaller than I was anticipating. That's great. So this is, wow, all right. So with any of the foam swords that I build, I always want to put a core into them, right? Something that can run down the length of the sword that'll actually keep it straight. Because you build a, something kind of thin like this out of foam and it's going to be flexible. And I don't want that. So what I'm going to use, because Gamora deserves it, is a carbon fiber rod. Uh, it, I'm not using this because it's carbon fiber. It just happened to be that this was thin enough that I could use it in the sort of that I wanted. And in order to get it long enough, carbon fiber was the only choice I had. So I'm going to be using this. I mark where I need to cut the tube. And then I mark on the pattern where I want the tube to be inside of the sword. Now, cutting the tube is easy enough. This part I can actually use up here in some sort of creative way. And I cut the tube up into three pieces to fit the profile of the small top blade. And I used five minute epoxy to glue the pieces together. By taping them to some foam core, I know that they would stay flat. I also added a drop of glue to the end of the really long piece. The cut end is a little sharp. And I hung it up so when the epoxy sets, it'll have like a drip shape. And I start planning how I can build the blade. I want to do it on two layers of six millimeter foam. So I'm going to do this. Okay. I probably should go ahead and do this more to scale than I am right now. I'll use triangular dowels for the cutting edge. And so how big is the middle piece that I need to make? So that's 10. This can only be 20. Man, that's just so small. I cut my sword pattern down to just what I need and I trace two of them onto some six millimeter HD foam. I also trace two copies of the small top blade. On my paper pattern, I had marked where the carbon fiber tube needs to go, so I copy that onto the foam. I also made a poster board copy of the pattern, and I'm gonna glue that onto one side of the foam because it'll help stiffen the blade up. I need to cut a channel to fit the core of the tube of the sword. In previous builds, I would do this by hand, but I recently found my old Dremel rounder attachment, which only fits my older Dremel model, but by using it with a rounded grinding bit and a straight edge, I can cut very straight and consistent channels into the foam that'll fit the carbon fiber tube, even if it does tear up the poster board a little bit. I marked where to stop on each side so I can glue them together easily. I had cut the sword pieces larger than my pattern lines, and now that they're glued together, I line the pattern up with the exposed tube and some other marks I made and trace it out again. Now, when I cut out the blade, the tube will stay inside. You know something I didn't do that I forgot to do? I was gonna do this before this got to be too much thinner. So I need to do that, because I'm all excited about cutting it out. In my haste to cut this out, because I was excited that it's working, I forgot a detail. There's a step that I needed to do before I cut the blade down to its tiny thinness. I need to add the fuller, the groove that goes in the center of the blade from this cutout to the fork on both sides. I'm going to do that with the router again and a different bit. I really like how well this router idea is working. I'm thinking about 3D printing a new router base that will clip onto the side of the Cos Tools ruler, which will make using it even easier. So it's got the smallest a little crunchy at the bottom of the ridge, right, right where the tip is actually spinning. I can't remove that crunchy stuff with a pencil eraser, but 400 grit sandpaper works. Now I can cut the center of the sword down to the size that it needs to be. I plan the core being exposed on this one side. The triangular dowel will glue right over it. And my plan is to use a 10 millimeter dowel for the cutting edge. Oh, that's like way off, look at that. Wow, yeah. I am going to want 15. 
Wow, really? Okay. That's why I want 15. Before I glue anything on, I grind the edge of the sword so it looks sharp. And I notice the side without the tube is a little wobbly. So to add stability, I cut a piece of coat hanger wire and poke it into the tip. Then glue the 15 millimeter dowel right over the wire and along the side of the sword. The top edge is also glued on with the dowel gluing right to the carbon fiber tube. The 15 millimeter dowel is bigger than the 12 and a half millimeter blade. So a little sanding with my newer Dremel will even them all out. I was also working on the top small blade while waiting for the glue to dry. It was glued together, cut out, and sanded with my Dremel, pretty much just like how I made the main blade. I added a piece to repair the shoulder of the blade. I had cut this smaller, thinking the dowel needed to glue here as well. To make the grip, I'll start with a piece of half-inch PVC pipe. I cut one end to fit the shoulder of the blade. And I can use hot glue to secure the grip to the tang of the blade, that's the carbon fiber tube. I used lots of hot glue, like a lot of it. I didn't want the grip to, well, lose its grip. While the hot glue cooled, I sanded the small blade some more using 400 grit sandpaper, smoothing out the blade from all the Dremel work, and I rounded the top half of its grip. Then I sanded the middle of the body to have a curved shape. I didn't want to just leave this as a bunch of flat foam. The bottom of the top blade should flare out a little where it connects to the main blade. So I decided to cut a dowel in half. And this takes a really sharp razor to get a clean cut. And then I glue each side of that to the base of the top blade. It's easy. Now trim the middle after the glue sets. And that gave me an idea on how I can shape the cross guard of the main blade. I cut some 10 millimeter dowels in half to be the center ridge. And then I add some split 15 millimeter dowels to be the body of the cross guard, the edges of the body anyway. And I fill in the rest with some six millimeter foam. All the seam lines I see are okay because I'm gonna be covering them. I just need this portion to be a little bigger. For the look of the cross guard, I cut panels from two millimeter foam and then glue them on in layers, covering up all the seams from the previous step. You see, Gamora's sword unfolds and expands in the movie and all of these layers hint at how everything fits together when the sword is retracted in its smallest form. And there's a panel on the small blade as well. So that has to build up a bit. Well, that's not a big deal. Yeah, just do a couple of sixes. Do a six and then a six and it'll be fine. To finish the grip, I want to glue foam to the PVC. 80 grit sandpaper roughens up the plastic to give it a tooth for better glue hold. I wrap paper around the PVC pipe and then trace the angle of the blade on both sides and that way I have a pattern so I can cut layers of two millimeter foam so I can finish the grip. And I cut out three layers, wrapping the smallest layer first, and then I cover that with a slightly longer middle layer, and I cover them both with a full length layer of two millimeter foam. This gives me that soft stepped look that's actually on the grip. But I didn't account for the change in diameter on my wraps, so filler pieces of foam are needed. The pommel is easy, and I add a disc of 10 millimeter foam to the end, and then wrap a piece of two millimeter around that to hide the seam. I still need to add a little more before I can glue on the top blade. A little bit of six millimeter foam will do it. So I've got the basic shape done, but there's a little bit more to do. There's a bunch of marks that go all the way up the blade. There's a couple of nicks here and there of battle damage. And most importantly, there's like a broken tile mosaic pattern that goes on all over the telescoping sheath part. So uh, let's start scribing lines. The texture or pattern looks like a cracked tile mosaic. On the actual prop, all the tile pieces are recessed and the lines are raised. Now I could try to cut that out with what would end up being a foam lace and then glue it on, but I decided to etch the pattern with a razor knife instead. A heat gun will open the lines up, making everything easier to see, even my mistakes. And when I paint this, I'll paint all the tiles a dark silver and all the lines a really light silver. For all the etching that's on the blade, I use a fine tip on my wood burner. First, I do the lines on the small blade, and then I burn the lines into the large blade. I'm just trusting my eye to put these lines on. I didn't actually print a pattern for this. What's nice is that the pattern is mirrored on each side of the blade. It's just one pattern four times. 
I add a couple of details to the pommel as well. With all the details added, I can glue the top blade in place. I just need to make sure that it's lined up with the main blade. Paint it! The entire blade is silver metallic, and I'll start with a base of a really dark silver color from Plaid FX Paints. Well, two coats actually, just to be sure. I apply a thin black wash of some watered down liquid shoe polish. This will fill in the cracks and really make the different parts stand out. Then I add a coat of bright silver paint. This is kind of like dry brushing. It's, I'm, I'm more adding paint than that. Maybe it's just selective painting, but I, I try not to get any in the cracks or the lines. And with a fine brush, I add some bright silver on the lines of the texture that's on the cross guard. And just a touch of silver rub and buff all along the blade. Most of the materials I used are available for order and you can have them shipped right to you. I put a list and links in the description. Gamora's Sword, also called the God Slayer's Sword, because apparently this sword can slay as guardians. So I suppose I should be careful, right? But in all seriousness, this is easily the most complicated sword sized sword that I've made, compared to what I typically build, right? I mean, this, this is actually appropriately sword size. This is a very realistic size. And because of that, arguably it may be easier to 3D print one instead of doing what I did, but that's not what I like to do. I like to make things by hand and out of foam because this is how Odin makes. It's such a tiny freaking piece. I'm like gluing this. Well, I can make it a little bit wider. I'm not using this thick. I want to use six with poster board. Man, there's barely anything to this sword. Am I holding it right, right? It's not this way? Because you know what? It sure does feel better this way. But I kept thinking this is the top because this doesn't feel right. I wonder if I'm holding it upside down. Eh, whatever. I want to thank Shaduchi. Vader Dude and all of my Patreon supporters. My Patreon support is the number one thing that makes this show possible. If you like the video, don't forget to subscribe. Have an idea for something for me to make? Please leave a comment below. And if you make any of these projects, you can send me a picture.